Kate. Maddie, it feels so empty in the studio. I know. We don't have any friends. I know. Except We're friendless Nick. again. Except Nick. Hey, hey Nick. Nick. Broke the fourth wall. <laughs> Nick is our amazing videographer who mm, none of you will ever meet these amazing YouTube videos every week. Mm-hmm. And we're very grateful for him. <laughs> He's I realized that I can have a lot more fun with the video stuff than the podcast. Like sometimes I edit things out of the podcast because like Lucia was talking about something and she was like, you know, it's like this. And she was like using her hands to demonstrate it. I was like, that's not going to come off in audio. Mm-hmm. But with the video, you can have so much more fun. Yeah. And yeah. as a as a chronic hand talker myself. I do. I enjoy it. I think it's it's great. I love it's letting great. people know <laughs> what's going demonstrate. on. You should yeah. be one of those airplane directors. I have very long arms. You do. I think I could do that. And you're tall. And I'm tall. And you, you've got I a get, lot of energy. I get cold, though. I uh, yes. think it'd be cold out there. So go to like the Miami airport and do it. Oh, yeah. That sounds all right. Win-win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but I'm pale. That's true. So you, like, <laughs> you know where you could go? Mm. Either California or Barbados, where there were some really fast races this yeah, weekend. Yeah, you could get a few boxes ticked there. Yeah, I would, and some sunshine. A new line of work and some really good race courses. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, and some good training locales too. Super. Yeah, traincation, is that what we call them? Yeah. I think, yeah, that's what training camp is. It's a yeah. traincation. Yep, and they're very necessary. <laughs> Super. So, at the California International Marathon, every time I see these kind of numbers, it just... I understand that the U.S. has a lot more population to draw from than we do, but it's still kind of staggering. No, but the the amount of people who have qualified for the Olympic trials in February, Mm -hmm. the Olympic marathon trials, I think they're going to bankrupt the organization. Oh, I know. Like this is going to be the biggest Olympic trials ever. Yep, for sure. I haven't absolutely verified that statistic, but if there has been a bigger Olympic trials with sort of the same relative caliber of standard. Mm-hmm. I don't know of it. No, no. They're going to have to hold like multiple waves at the oh, for sure. marathon trials. Mm-hmm. So at the CIM over the weekend, just at that race alone, there were 56 runners who qualified. And this for the is US on Olympic top trials. of the, I believe the last time I checked was about four weeks ago and we were at like 600. I know it's crazy. And the window isn't even over yet. I believe no. the window closes in January. Houston is still very much a possibility for people to qualify. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's, it's tight to come back and then yes, run a good one, but you could, but you could. Yep. So there were 19 women and 37 men who qualified for these U S Olympic trials. And again, just a reminder to our listeners, the standards are not soft. No. 219 on the men's side and 245 on the women's side is what you have to run to make it into the U.S. Olympic trials. When was the last time that those would have been like Canadian marathon standards for the Olympics? Yeah, not, not that the long trials, ago. the Olympics. Yeah. But I mean, we're stepping it up too. Oh, so big time. Yeah. It's getting better across the board, but this is very exciting. Um, CIM is always a pretty popular event, just again, because it's a warm, mm-hmm. nice, kind of reliable training r- racing location you're near napa you're near, near napa. wine country mm. where else would you rather be in december especially if you are living in toronto and we've had all this it's either been like unseasonably cold and snowy or it's just been pouring right no, do you know what i've thought do you know what i thought this morning and i that thought you want to go to california and i thought well that too yeah. mission accomplished um i thought november was december and december is november in terms of weather yep that is very accurate. Thank you. I thought that, and I, I thought yeah. I should tweet that, but my Twitter's inactive, right. as I've mentioned before. <laughs> as <laughs> like, we really want listeners I, to know. I would like it to stay that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's how Toronto's been. Yeah. No, it's very true. Yeah. And I, I'm ready for it to be done. The problem is I don't like January at all. So I don't want January no, to be January. Frankly, I'm not big on February. <laughs> no. And March is fine. And April, we're looking up. Usually... Anyway, we're in a, we're, you know, we're Canadian. We can handle it. The holidays are around the corner. That's true. I do like the holidays. Me too. Christmas cookies and eggnog. Anyway. Do you like eggnog? You know, I really do. I love it. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I really like eggnog. Most people think that's a weird <laughs> take, but I really like eggnog. No, I really do too. I might buy some tonight. Yeah. Get in the festive spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we also had some really fast Canadians at yeah. Sim. Blair Morgan, 217.33. Almost a full minute PB. Almost a full minute PB. Yeah. That's very impressive. It is very impressive. He ran really well. Um, And then our two women, Danielle Thiel of Edmonton Mm -hmm. 
I believe this was her debut. I have not found to my another, knowledge. This is her debut. Another result, and she debuted in a two thirty five eighteen. Really awesome. How old is she? Uh, I believe she's a ninety two birthday. Okay, yeah. super cool. I know. And then Brittany Moran with a huge PB. I know. I'm she's so wanted happy to for break two forty for so long. Yeah. In fact, and we'll cover this next story in a little bit, but this rundown actually is a real, it's like the inspirational rundown because it's several stories of people who have returned from like major, major injury and Mm -hmm. a lot of time off almost to the point where they thought their high level running careers might be over to come back and do really exciting things. So Britt had a sacral stress fracture and a torn hamstring Mm -hmm. um, and she was out for the better part of a year. Yeah. It's a nasty combination. Yeah. Brutal. And I think like the the stress fracture was just starting to heal. And then the hamstring tore. I think that was the order it happened. And sorry, Britt, I know you listen every week. Shout out to Britt Moran. She's like a super fan, too. She's a super fan. She's great. She always tags us on Instagram. Yes. Thank you for that. In fact, there's your call to action listeners. If you tag us, we'll mention you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the bar is not that high. <laughs> but Brittany, congratulations. 236.23, mm-hmm. four and a half minute PB. After a tough year. After a really tough year. And her first full marathon since 2017 i think she's also the busiest person i've ever met i know (laughs) she's got like 80 million things on the go at all times but she does them all extremely well makes it look easy she does chiropractor extraordinaire if you're in the toronto area and you are looking for a manual therapist i highly recommend her Mm -hmm. uh congrats Britt and danielle and blair and everyone else at cim success all around and moving a little bit further south yeah a little southeast towards barbados where once again, a big group of Canadians go down and they just win everything. They do this every year. Yeah, they I do love it, it every year and it looks so fun. I know. And I don't know how I get an invite, <laughs> but this is me officially asking. Right. I'll run the road mile. Heck, I'll run the 5K. I've done one of those before. Yeah, you have. Quite, yeah. quite well. So, right. So this event takes place um, around this weekend every year and it's a three day event. So there's a mile on the Friday night. There's, I believe, the five and the 10 on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then there's a half marathon on the Sunday. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people will double up. So they'll do like the five and the half or the 10 and a half Mm -hmm. or, you know, the mile and the five, which would be a really fun combo. Super fun. Yeah. But it's always hot and steamy. And our Canadians, I think it's the same thing. They're just looking to get out of the snow. They've a lot of them have just come off of Canadian cross. Yeah. And And Yves Sikawabu is like a four peat champion. Natasha Wodak, I think owns the race now. I don't know. (laughs) It seems like so many years when she's done so well there. Yeah. And this year was no different with Yves defending his 10K title in 32.16 and his half marathon title in 113.09 and Natasha Wodak winning the 10K in 36.08. And she's got to be wiped out. I can't, I cannot believe she's not stopped racing like a year. Nope. And she's going on to do the Pan Am cross country cup Mm -hmm. in February, right? Yeah. And so she'll have a little bit of a breather between now and then, but she's still preparing for an international race. I know. It, yeah, she's a machine. She is the Energizer Bunny. It's incredible. Um, these times aren't all that fast, but it is so, so hot and humid there. It's so hot and humid. And also, like we said, Natasha Wodak is fully training through this event. Yes. This is not a goal for no, her. No. This is a fun weekend where she gets to do a little bit of running. It's great. Uh, shout out to Honorary Canadian. We talked about her last week. We talked about her a lot. Sarah Inglis. She okay. won the half. Also doing a lot of racing. Yeah. Second to the Canadian Cross Championships. That's right. Super impressive. Yeah. That was only a week ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good job, Canadians in Barbados. We really have to make that trip one year. You yeah. and I. Maybe maybe post-Tokyo. Deal. Sign yeah. Me up. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Third piece of road news, which uh, we've gone from some sort of lighthearted, fun, exciting stuff to something that just really ticks me off <laughs> So, as a female runner and, and reporter. And reporter. So Alex Bozargian, who's a reporter, was assaulted on air during a race in Savannah, Georgia. Yep. Tommy Calloway, a 43-year-old runner who's reportedly also a youth minister and a Boy Scout leader. Great. Um, Smacked her on the butt as he ran by. And it was obvious and embarrassing. And she was just, I mean, I couldn't believe how she composed herself. Yeah. Again, folks will link the video, which has now gone viral in the write-up for this. But, you know, and it's weird because, like, we were just talking about this before we started recording today, how... 
anytime I think there's a camera out on a on a big race course, people get excited. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, it's, you know, local TV. They want their three seconds of fame or whatever. So there's lots of people kind of reaching into the frame of the camera to mm-hmm. like wave or say hi, mom. And there's people dressed in costume and like a gorilla runs by at one point. Someone dresses a gorilla runs mm-hmm. by and uh, she's like, oh, you don't see that very often. But then what happens next is completely different because you can see this guy in the background and he's almost winding up. Like it was definitely premeditated. Oh, totally. And he hits her on the butt on live TV and she, the look of shock on her face as well, and he the runs thing off. Is, that probably would have been a cool move 30 years ago, 40 yeah, years cool ago. Yeah, cool as in totally fine to the people in charge who are all men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it is so not now, no. and it hasn't been for a long time. Uh, I mean, are, we had this conversation with Lanny less than two weeks ago about, like, you know, being subjected as a woman in particular, not that this is okay for anyone, Mm-mm. but being subjected to this kind of just, like, really egregious yet somehow passive stuff that people are like, oh, just, it's fine, it's not that big a deal. Well, and that's the thing, and there's a lot of responses that are, oh, well, this isn't that big a deal. Right. No one, have you ever gone to your job and you're grabbed in the butt? Right. No. Especially on live TV. Especially on live yeah, TV. No, no it's, 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 it's completely unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's pretty much all it is. It's, yeah. it's completely black and white to me. It's just not acceptable. Um, she's been relatively quiet on the subject so far. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things left to be determined. I mean, he won't be criminally charged unless she decides to press charges. There's no word if she's planning on doing that. But she did tweet in response to this to the man who smacked my butt on live TV this morning. You violated, objectified and embarrassed me. No woman should ever have to put up with this at work or anywhere. Do better. And I think I think we should give her the last word because that kind of says it all. I agree. Moving on to more exciting stuff on the track. So Chuck P.T. <sighs> finally, he's back. He's he is been, back, baby. It's been over a year since he raced. Yeah, 13 months, I think. 13 months since he raced. And in that time, he put all his energy into planning a beautiful wedding. Which you attended. Which I attended. Yep. Lovely wedding. Yep. So you know what? If you've got to be injured and you want to get distracted, get, get married. <laughs> get <Shack> married. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well but yeah marital marital bliss seems to be working for him (laughs) yeah actually they like got married and then he got on the road for like three months so i think they probably spent like two weeks together (laughs) honeymoon is a relative term but she knew what she was signing up for yeah and you know she's like she gets a surgeon or something and is just ridiculously busy so yeah yeah. she'll be just fine Um, anyway it's working out for him because he ran the fourth fastest canadian 5000 meter time recorded for indoors for indoors yeah and a massive personal best yeah and a quebec record by almost 30 seconds yep and a great way to bust the rest after over a year off of competition. Yep. And he was third. He was third. And I watched this race is available on Flow Track. I don't think you have to pay for it. I love that. Yeah. Sometimes you don't. No. And so, again, we'll link it. People should go watch it. He ran 13.30. And it the way it plays out is exactly how I would expect for as speaking as a 5,000 meter runner who the next time I race one, it will have been over a year. I mm. think this is usually how it goes. He hangs out by the near the back of the pack. They're on, I think, 13, 20 pace mm-hmm. for a while up at the front. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just works his way up. And there's a couple of times when you can see that he has made a decision to close a gap. Mm-hmm. And it's just thrilling to watch. And just like the sense of redemption when he comes across the line, third place, 1330, all the accolades you just said. So exciting. Awesome. I'm so happy for him. And he wasn't the only one who ran really well. I think no. this is like the strongest on mass indoor 5K we've probably ever seen. And it's December. And it's December. Like, people are think, fit. But I think people are getting fired up early this year because everything's happening so early. That's so true. if you weren't at the world championships mm-hmm. and you're healthy, right. there's no real reason to wait. That's true. Until January to get this indoor season yeah. underway. Yeah. And some people are coming off of good cross country strength too. Well, exactly. So and that would work well for you. For most of the men, the younger men who raced really well, um, that was Josh D'Souza, Ibrahim Kadir, Kieran Lum, great cross country runner. Yeah. And then also Thomas Fafford, who was the surprise bronze medalist at nationals oh, in right. the summer. Yeah. Yeah. He was the Laval guy, a teammate of Charles's. Right. They've just been in Flagstaff together. Yeah. Who everyone was like, who in the heck is Thomas <laughs> Fafford? Anyway, super exciting. Yeah. They both cracked 14 minutes. Mm-hmm. 
both ran really well. Mm -hmm. And then our juniors, though, that's the story. The juniors are the really fun story. Yeah. Because so these two guys, Abraham Kadir and Josh D'Souza, Ibrahim runs his race. The heats go fastest to slowest. Right. So Charles was in heat one. Ibrahim's in heat two. Josh is in heat three. Yeah. Ibrahim runs a Canadian record, a yeah. Canadian junior 5,000 meter indoor record. 1417. 1417. I think it was exactly a second. It was exactly a second it was 14, better. 17, 92. <laughs> yeah. And then, so he's celebrating. He's celebrating for like 10 minutes. And then he realizes that his buddy Josh is going to break the record he just set right. in the slower heat. Right. And that's what happens. Anyway, and he was like, I was so excited. We're friends. You know, it's just cool that we're moving this forward together. But he was a Canadian record holder for 17 minutes. Yeah. Because like usually when something like this happens, it happens in the same heat. So you say you ran under the record, but you didn't run the record. Yes, exactly. But the fact that it was in two heats is really funny because yeah. he was a Canadian record holder for probably one of the shortest times ever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me once in high school um, at a race in Rochester, New York called the McQuaid Cross Country Invitational. Mm -hmm. And there were all these different categories, like based on the size of your school and your age and all this stuff. And so I ended up running a course record for my category. Mm -hmm. And then two races later, which was the same category, but like another heat, basically, Molly Huddle broke it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I broke Molly Huddle's record. And then someone else in another heat broke it back from me about 20 minutes later. Kate, and I, Molly Huddle's record. That's but I was impressive. really upset because they hand out this like booklet every year of mm -hmm. all the records. And then it like says who you took it from. So I thought my name was going to go in there as breaking Molly Huddle's record. But because it, I didn't even last a full year, it got broken later that day. You didn't. So the next you year. mere minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not. Yeah. Did it even happen if it wasn't in the pamphlet? It's yeah, like it's if, you, if, if it's not on Strava, was it even <laughs> does it even count? I haven't lived any of my life. Actually, uh, some of my runs get posted onto Strava. You know who's a great example of things counting even if you don't have it recorded anywhere? Who's that? Trevor Hoffbauer, Canadian Marathon. I know he doesn't victor post this year. Anything? Well, and he ran without a watch. I know. So, but but I, I'm pretty sure his race still counted. It is two oh nine? His yeah. his, his Olympic qualifier. Yeah. It, it counted. Still counts. Anyway, congrats to everyone who raced in Boston. Way to get it going early in the season, setting Super. the bar for everyone else. And for like a distance that's been other than, you know, I would say like Mo, but Justin's moving up, which yep. is really exciting. And now we're seeing sort of this third wave of young guys yep. who are opting. I would imagine that even five, seven or five years ago, these younger men would have opted for the 15. Totally. But now we have idols in the 5K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good work, men. Um. We've kind of got a pattern going here. We have like good news, cool, bad news, cool news, bad news. Yeah. So the bad track news is that, well, it's sort of mixed. WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, announced today that Russian athletes will not be permitted en masse to compete for the next four years. So they have remained non-compliant mm -hmm. uh, with the international guidelines around doping and therefore Team Russia will not be allowed to participate as such at the 2020 or 2022 Olympics. Mm -hmm. They will also, Russia will not be permitted to hold any major international events during mm -hmm. that four-year sanction. Um, this sounds at first glean like a, like a real win for clean sport, but there's a lot of um, pushback. Yeah. Um, and one of the most vocal opponents of this has actually been USADA, the U.S. anti-doping agency president, Travis Tigard, who said that this is basically just um, WADA putting in the lowest possible ban for athletes because you can still compete as what's called an ANA, an authorized neutral athlete, mm -hmm. um, if you're Russian and you can prove that you weren't in Moscow during the, all the lab mix-ups. Which is... Also, I imagine something athletes would have noticed oh, or yeah. seen coming and said, let's get the heck out of Moscow exactly. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't, it doesn't mean you're guilty, but it also certainly doesn't mean you're innocent. Yeah. And I understand the debate around this. I mean, I, I completely understand that if you are truly a clean athlete mm -hmm. who happens to be from Russia, and we do know that there are athletes who left Russia to go to university, let's say in the States, and never left the US mm -hmm. or other parts of the world. So they mm -hmm. have not even been in the country. They haven't been training under any kind of like coaching or US mm -hmm. or um, Russian officials. Mm -hmm. I understand in those cases, the frustration of a blanket ban. Oh, yeah. However... I got to 
subscribe to the utilitarian (laughs) philosophy here where it's like, it's got to be the greatest good for the greatest number. And I just think that the number of truly clean Russian athletes are so small that it's hard to stomach some of this. Mm -hmm. At least they have been given somewhat of a ban and hopefully there will be cleaner sport moving ahead. I think realistically it will be appealed, but Mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. Yes. (laughs) Stay tuned. We will keep you posted on all of the WADA drama. That's fun to say. WADA drama. WADA drama. Onto the trail with kind of some sad news. Yeah. Barkley Marathon's namesake died at age 70 over the weekend. Barry Barkley from Tennessee, who was a neighbor, friend, and training partner of the race organizer, Laz Lake. Yeah. And he meant so much to Laz that Laz named the Barkley Marathons after him. If you haven't seen the Barkley Marathons, we believe it's on YouTube. <laughs> Highly recommend it. The documentary. If you yeah. Google Barkley Marathons documentary, mm-hmm. it will come to you. One of the tributes that Laz Lake wrote about his friend um, was that Barry actually was very heavily involved in the Barkley Marathons every year. Like he's gone to almost every race. And mm-hmm. basically Laz was saying, if you've competed or if you've gone to Barkley, you've probably met him. You just didn't know it because he was a really quiet guy and he was really modest. Um, but he has this unbelievably cool event named after him. So his legacy will live on through the Barkley Marathons for years to come. So our wonderful videographer, Nick, just corrected us in saying that there are two Barkley Marathon videos, documentaries that are both worth worth watching. The first one is the one that's probably better known. It is available on Netflix. There's a second one that was created um, called Where Dreams Go to Die, and it was put out by Gary Robbins and Ginger Runner, and it is available on YouTube. And I have not seen that one, so... Maybe tonight. Yeah. It, it's pouring rain currently in Toronto and like two degrees and I have done all my exercising for the day. So I think sitting in my altitude tent and watching a documentary about crazy running adventures sounds like the right thing to do. So for the week of December 9th, I'm Kate. I'm Maddie. We'll be back with more next week. Next week.